coming up on Mountain News this morning, a stabbing in West Virginia community leaves one person dead and a group of people facing charges. And a suspect in a Powell County murder case will have to wait even longer for his day in court. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning. The time is 534 on this Wednesday morning. Let's throw it over to Brandon Robinson for a look at the weather. Heat and quiet again this morning. No major issues. A little warmer than it has been the last few days. Still a few 30s out there, but overall more 40s and 50s and clear skies. Let's take you over to Pikeville this morning to the Pikeville intersection there. Came back to where it has been for a little while at US 119, US 23. That's right across the street from Pikeville Commons and the big shopping center over there. No major issues. They're one of the warmer spots in the region at 53. Down the road from them, Clintwood, Grundy, and into Jonesville. Also Middlesbrough all in the 30s this morning, but it's upper 30s. And then everybody else is in the 40s. Bless you, Keaton. We're looking at 50 there, Prestonsburg, or 52 rather, in Prestonsburg and Logan. 52 in Moorhead and 54 in Jackson. Your 12 hour planner only goes the right direction today. Up. We're going to see temperatures climbing to the upper 70s, maybe close to 80 for some. Lots of sunshine. Sunshine. Sunrise today, 703. Sunset, 806. Keaton. Thank you, Brandon. One person is dead following a stabbing Monday night in Mingo County, West Virginia. State police say Corey Markham was stabbed in the thigh. Five people are in custody in connection with this case and have been charged with felony accessory after the fact. Matt Lacris reports. State police say since finding Corey Markham dead here at the Magnolia Garden apartment complex, they've been trying to figure out exactly what happened. They've since arrested five people and charged them with felony accessory after the fact. Speaking with one of his friends, he can't believe he's gone. Corey's friend agreed to do an interview with us, but only if we didn't show his face and altered his voice. His worry is that people will come after him if they see they talked about Corey. Corey was a great guy. I mean, if he if you needed anything, he would absolutely give it to you. But there was definitely no reason for it to happen to him. State police say there's still a lot to find out, and they're looking at multiple locations and other persons of interest connected to his death. Corey's friend says police need to find all those connected to his murder. And they should go jail for life. That's easy. I mean. For that to happen to such a good person, they should not be out walking free whatsoever. Here in Kentucky, one person is dead after a house caught on fire. Fire happened on 3D Road in Lawrence County near the Fallsburg area. The woman was pronounced dead at around 1.30 a.m. Tuesday morning. Two people did survive. The names of those involved in the fire have not been released at this time. Police say they found a detonated pipe bomb in Harlan County yesterday. The sheriff says it was on an ATV trail in the Kinver community. Officials determined it was safe to recover pieces of the bomb scattered throughout the area. No arrests have been made in the case so far. The sheriff says he believes this is an isolated incident, but if you see anything suspicious, to call the Harlan County Sheriff's Office. The arraignment for a Powell County murder suspect was delayed yesterday. Devin Hall and Tanya McKinney are charged in connection to Jason Smith's death. Hall is charged with his murder. He's accused of stabbing him. And McKinney is charged with complicity. A judge delayed the hearing due to illness. Victims of Eric C. Khan are getting notices this week as the process to get Social Security back pay moves forward. Ned Pillersdorf, the attorney representing those who lost Social Security benefits because of Khan, says anyone who's seeking back pay should send him request for a hearing now. He says if they win a hearing, all the benefits will be reinstated. That's part of an agreement reached earlier this year between Pillersdorf and the Social Security Administration. And now we know the new date for trial against a former Rowan County clerk. The new trial date for Kim Davis is set for September 11th. Administrative error led to the delay. Davis denied two same-sex couples marriage licenses back in 2015. A judge found she violated their con constitutional rights. Now a jury, jury must determine how much money Davis owes the couple. On Tuesday, local leaders gathered at the Knott County Sportsplex for a special announcement. The foundation for Appalachian Kentucky has been deeded a parcel of land in the Chestnut Mountain subdivision in Knott County, where it will work with housing partners like the Housing Development Alliance and Samaritan's Purse to build 57 new homes for flood survivors. Foundation CEO Jerry Roll says people from any county affected will be eligible for one of the homes. We have already seen people moving, crossing county lines and moving from place to place. And what's wonderful about that is we're building new neighborhoods. 
some people are able to stay in their current neighborhood and that's great. We want them to be able to do that. But some people want to move. They would like to go from Breathitt County to Perry County or from Perry County to Knott County. We can do that. The homes are being built on a portion of the Western Pocahontas properties. Enroll says they received it from a partnership with Western Pocahontas and Joe and Kelly Craft. And dozens of community members and even Governor Andy Bashir gathered to welcome the final family into a, the new Gurney's Bend subdivision in Hazard. WMT's RJ Johnson was there for that heartfelt moment. Folks from across the region came out in support of Hazard's newest subdivision in more than 50 years. With funding from various organizations, Assistant Director of the Housing Development Alliance, Chris Dahl, says the new subdivision is something the community needed. We were selling them as fast as we could build them. That it's a very attractive neighborhood, they're great looking houses, and it's in a great location. The final home in the neighborhood was sold to a family of flood survivors, and with the keys to their new home in hand, officials are left to ask, what is next for other flood survivors in the county? Both Dahl and Governor Andy Bashir agree that housing projects like building the neighborhood need to continue. Next is uh, flood recovery, that um, we need Gurney's Bend 10 times over um, to help the flood survivors that are in our community. And so it's great to pause, but now we are looking to doing this again and again and 10 more times again. I mean, you look up and down the street and you see what's possible. Bringing people out of the flood zone to a safe area, a new home, one where they can be secure, uh, hug their families, build their memories, uh, today gives me a huge amount of hope. With the vision for what is to come for flood survivors, Dahl and Governor Bashir say they are excited for the future. In Hazard, RJ Johnson, WYMT Mountain News. Dahl also said he's thankful for the community that supported the Housing Development Alliance's efforts in this process. Students at Hazard High School participated in a unique prom yesterday, but this one was for senior citizens. Se students dance with patients from a nursing home, the Veterans Center, and the Senior Citizen Center. It was held in the Hazard High School gym, where students had their actual prom Saturday night. Everyone looked like they were having a great time. The theme this year was Mardi Gras. In Lexington, a group of girls took a glimpse into their futures, what their futures could look like at a career fair yesterday. The Rotary Club of Lexington, in collaboration with a group called Empowering Girls, hosted the fair. Many of the students were inspired, including a fifth grader at Harrison Elementary School. I want to be a police officer because police help people that get hurt. After visiting the Lexington Police Station portion, Rush decided that it was what she wants to be when she grows up. Although this was only the first year the career fair was held, organizers hope this effort impacts the students for years to come. Just ahead this morning, if you're looking for something fun and educational to watch, new documentary all about the rise and fall of one of the biggest parties of the 80s and 90s set to hit air on Hulu. And temperatures will continue moving up for a couple of days before coming back down with some rain chances just in time for the weekend. I'll track them out for you in about three minutes.